Today's lesson comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 17th chapter, verses 1 through 9. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So Chris was sharing with me um, something I never really gave much thought to. Uh, Chris likes to... Chris prepares for his uh, Wednesday night class a week early, and so he'll listen through the, um, the lectionary with these uh, men that do a, uh, a <clears throat> series of Through the Bible. And um, Chris was sharing it. This is one of the most, uh, or this is the most, preached upon scripture in the lectionary. It's interesting. I gave it a little thought, and I'm like, yeah, you're right, because there's more than one Christmas story, right? There's more, although there is more than one transfiguration uh, message going on. This particular passage we dedicate every year for. And so with that being, with that happening, then it can almost be as, dare I say, redundant as the Christmas message or the Easter message. Uh, Transfiguration. It's, a, it's, a, um, <clears throat> it's one of the more well-known stories, but probably more, uh, one of the more misunderstood, I would imagine. Uh, I've uh, been working on this series on mission, right? Mission. We're going to continue that today. And, and I had this set up where next, uh, this week was going to be on mercy. And... Um, I changed that around. I changed that around a little bit. We'll get to that in a minute because of the scripture reading. So I said, Chris was sharing with me how common this is, and I said, challenge accepted. <laughs> Let's see if we can make something else happen here today. Let's see if God's word has a new revelation. I mean, this book's been around for a long time. This passage has been around for, for around 2,000 years. It's been preached very poorly for a long time, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, still people can see good insight. And, and in spite of my weakness today, I pray that that same thing continues to happen, right? So we're going to start right off. What does your heart break for? Oh, my goodness. I'm typing this in this morning. I'm like, man, they must be sick of this. <laughs> like, they're like, this guy is stubborn. He's not going to give up on this, is he? No, I'm not. What does your heart break for? Right? Continue to soak in this. Continue to challenge yourself. As soon as you figure it out, soak in it some more. Who does your heart just totally break for? That's where mission begins. What is mission? Whose mission is it? God's mission, right? What is mission? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out, isn't it? Right? Remember, we spoke quite a bit. About, I spoke quite a bit about how it's not charity. And I was thinking today, as I'm working this through myself along with you, that remember, charity is something that we just give, and sometimes you feel good. Sometimes you feel good. Sometimes you, you, know, you write the check and you, and you send it off and you feel, hey, that was a good deed, right? Mission involves us to get dirty. Mission is dirty work, as I mentioned last work, right? Mission is where we not only give, but we also receive, right? There's one thing. We had that wonderful dinner last night. What a blessing last night, huh, John? We had a great turnout, right, Michelle and Michael? That was great. All those that came out, we, we um, Jeff... And Spencer was helping out, and, and Tom and Brenda was there. I mean, I, I don't want to miss anybody. Um, but what a great time. We had a great turnout. And, um, and, and it, it, but it's more than just feeding someone, isn't it? Right? I mean, can I share just a little? Like, you're having, you're interacting, you're eating with them and sharing with them. And it, it's, it's being with people. And, and us, so we're being fed as, as we feed, and, and, and 
they're feeding us, and it, 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 and it's it's crazy. But it's mission. Mission is God's is God's sending of God's people to join the Son. Yes, the slide was last week and the week before. It's going to be next week too, because we have to remember that it's more than just our our work, right? It's that we're meeting our Savior in the mission field. We can't do it alone. And praise God, we don't have to, nor are we supposed to, right? We participate with the Son in reconciling the world to God. And I have a special slide that says, yes, that includes us. That includes us. This is not a, dare I say again, a, a superiority complex that Christians hold. Right? That's not what we're about. We're about being in the, in, the, in the mission field together as one. We, too, need to be reconciled continually. This is one of the problems with the, when, we say like one, like when we say that you're saved. And, and praise God that salvation is, 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 is everything. But, but if, we, if we just lean on that, then we forget that we continue to be reconciled. Right? Because we walk in this world. So I've been talking a lot about the community. I found this slide and it's all the different things that, that, that invoke um, community. It says to help, it says young, and care, change, change is a hard one. One, work, homeless, better, job. There's all these things that are in community and it's all mishmashed together and it's not just one thing. I've been using this word community and breaking it down so we can focus on what is mission. I remember uh, two weeks ago I did connect Last week we did open and how difficult it is to be open and not just, not just our facility here, but, but to be open in our hearts. <clears throat> that we need to, like I had last week, connect. Connect. I've been thinking about this connect. And I, was, I found this, uh, this gift my daughter gave me for Christmas. You guys familiar with these? Nightmare. Nightmare. <laughs> right, now the goal is to connect the two together, right? Who wants to try? Somebody's got to. Anybody? You want to try? All right. What is it? It's a, it's a puzzle. Two, two pieces are, are identical. And you've got to get them together and you can't muscle it. You can't use like a hammer. You can't like... All right, let's see if you can do it. Let's see if you can get these to connect. <laughs> So relationships, I was thinking, it was a lot like this puzzle that my daughter got me for Christmas. I mean, at first you're like, you can't be that hard, right? Yeah. Right, now you're getting it all twisted up. Well, then it's connected. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of connection, yeah. When we connect... We live in a culture where more and more people claim no faith. This is the same slide I used a while ago. But however, we have to recognize that people are seeking something more. Okay, that's the first thing we realize. We just accept the fact that people are seeking more. Okay, and that, and that we are to connect with them. It seems impossible, but I, I proclaim to you that it's not. Okay, it is so important to be authentic in the way that we that um, helps points them towards a deeper being, deeper meaning. Second one I did last week, remember, was open. And we need to be open. For if we are to be open, then we need to ask, what barriers do we set preventing others from entering and participating in the community? Right? This is like a barrier. Right? And we may say, you know what? It's just, we're just two different people. We just can't connect. Although in this instance, we have two that are like a lot alike. Like, th like, like this person here gets happy, gets sad, feels pain, cries. And this person does the same thing. And we'll say, well, we're just incompatible because they just don't want to go together. The idea is, how do we break the barriers? There is a barrier here. How do we break that barrier? To be open is to mean that we take extreme risks. To be open means to be relevant. The question I proposed last week is, is the church relevant today? Is the church of Christ in your heart relevant today? 
open. Jesus loved to break barriers. Jesus consistently broke down gender, ethnic, and religious barriers. He invited people to different communities to, um, that was open for all, okay? That's just recapping. Today, we're going to focus on meditation, on meditation in this day of transfiguration. So I look it up, and basically it says meditation is a noun, and it's the action of meditation is a noun, the practice of meditating. And you're like, well, you can't define a term with a term, right? So we bring it to the verb. To think deeply or focus one's mind for a period of time in silence or with the aid of chanting for religious or spiritual purposes or as a method of relaxation. And my mind instantly went to this. Oh. And you say, Pastor, but we're Christians. We don't do. Oh. Yeah, why not? Why not? See, the idea is meditation. We meditate on all sorts of stuff. Some call it dwelling, right? Some call it uh, 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 obsessing, right? But what are we meditating on? And how are we meditating? That's the big question. When in mission, one needs to be mindful of the importance in meditating on God. We've been talking about this in Bible study last week. We did, uh, um, we did Rob Bell's series on noise. And, and when we silence the noise, that we can hear God. Individual practices such as reading, meditating, study, the scriptures, praying, fasting, attendance in worship, healthy living, and sharing in our faith with one another is crucial in mission. Right? Now, you remember, the first word I had is a noun, defined by its verb. This is something for us to be active. We were talking last week in Bible study that even finding silence is, is an action. It's hard for us to do, very hard. This act of piety will lead us into genuine communal practices such as regular sharing in the sacrament, Christian conferences, and holding one another accountability and, and Bible study. All right. Today's message. Let's bring it back just a second here. Meditation. Meditation is not something to be passive. It's active. It's a time for us to come together and study and to learn and to share and to become stronger and to become better equipped. Mission is hard, isn't it? Mission is is really difficult, right? All right. Yeah. Okay. So, so Pastor likes to show off, right? Right? Yeah. Pastor likes to show off? No. So, so let's try this again. Let's try this again. Hey, hold on my knees. Okay, make one a P and one a D. community. There is no separating. <laughs> <laughs> so it needs to go. Yeah, just like no, no, I missed the one too. Yeah, so no, straight in there. There you go. Let's get a little twisty. Don't fight it. Hold one and only that together. So see, see, when we work together, when we work together, we have we have to have patience. doesn't work. Such true relationships. Amen? Amen? So, remember, you have the P and the D. And you bring it together. Yay. Okay? And then, and then what you do is you keep one, one hand set. You want to try one more time? Yeah. 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 over silly or am I making a point here right and then to take it apart we have to 
get them to like this. And it's so easy when somebody, once you take, like, I, I, did, I, I used to be able to do this easily, and I couldn't, for the, I couldn't get it today. And so I went on, and I, I went online, and I saw them solve it, and then I spent some time, so that way in front of everybody, because anytime you practice something, you're gonna mess it up in front of people, right? And so I come up with this little idea of pastor, and, and D, I don't know, and you just put them together, and it's, oh my goodness, it's so easy, right? See, but, but if we force it, and you're never gonna get it, right? And, and let me move back. So meditation is something more than what we do alone. It's an opportunity for us to teach each other and learn. Now, I bet you if we spent maybe, maybe 10 minutes, maybe five, you'll have this down so much that I could sit down and you could come up here and then you could show somebody else. Amen? See, this is what mission is. But I can't be like, Donna, Teresa, you gotta go. You gotta be loving, you gotta be kind, you gotta be patient. And you gotta realize that I, not that long ago, couldn't do this very act. Now, here's the thing. Oh, for crying out loud. Got another one. And it's different. And Earl saw me playing with this this morning. Guess what? I cannot get this sucker together. And you know what I started doing? Started forcing it. Right? And I know better because I'm preaching, right? I'm preaching to you. I'm forcing it and I can't get it together. But maybe somebody in this congregation says, oh, well, that one I know. Pastor, let me show it to you. And then next thing you know, I'm better equipped. So this is the whole Sunday morning message, right, where, you know, you can't just get it all on in just a Sunday sermon. You know, we have tools. One of the great ones that got me reading the Bible is the upper room. Well, here's a copy for you. You got one? Anybody want an upper room? Take it. Bible's hard. This is a great... You want one? <laughs> Here you go. Upper room. A daily devotion. It will take you how long to read it? How long? Three minutes. Five minutes if you're a slow reader, maybe. What a great thing. I'm not much of a reader, Pastor. Well, we've got Michael W. Smith. You guys, anybody like Michael W. Smith? Does anybody like Nicole Norman? She's great. We kids? This is a little dated because I haven't been. Got Sonic Flood, got Avalon, that's for young adults. Super Chick. Got anybody Super Chick fans here? No? These are all words, songs expressing the love of God in their life. It is a devotion, right? I love Super Chick. I, mean, I brought my daughter to concerts when I was a kid because it's like telling young ladies to to try to find who they are inside before you let somebody, uh, some teenage boy identify them for them. I love this one. Uh, Barlow Girls, great, great music for teenagers. Gray's my favorite color is one of the songs. And then they have a rock opera called Hero. These are just a couple out of, you go to my office, you'll see all the music. We can put ourselves, what do we surround ourselves? I know Earl's a K-Love kind of guy. I, uh, Jane, I imagine you're, you listen to K-Love. Yeah, right, anybody else listen to K-Love? No, doesn't matter. There's all these different ways of expressing. Maybe a real heady kind of person. Maybe you want to know that theology in the Bible. I want some answers. I got a book you can borrow. It's a great, great book to start. It's called Introduction to the New Testament. If you're a heady kind of person, you want to get deeper understanding, stop. Here we go. I was just passing some of these out the other day at Bible study. Daily devotions. Daily devotions. This is by Joyce Myers. I think Joyce Myers does a wonderful job. This probably takes you about maybe. Five to ten minutes to get through a day. Great devotion. Not big reader, you got message on CD. And this is read by celebrities. Well, the celebrities aren't big celebrities. They're all the singers that I was just showing you. You like a little bit more conservative theology? I got this thing called um, J. Vern McGee Through the Bible. It's kind of like a sermon series, but it breaks it down every book in the Bible every day. They call it the Bible bus, right, Chris? And you go through it. And he explains different things. Next, Max Licato. Right? Uh, Max Licato's got, I think, Tracy, you like Max Licato, yes. Yeah. You like Max Licato too? Yeah, Max Licato is great. Uh, only, it's not a criticism. I love Max Licato, but if I read too many books in a row, I get a toothache because he's so sweet. But, <laughs> but it's great. He's great. He, he really, down to earth, he really shows us where God's alive in, in his life and in, in the community. I, um, I've read so many of his books and I've learned so much from him in a, in a spiritual loving way um, oh yeah don't forget this guy the 
Bible. This one's the message. This was given to me by Janu Chung. This is written in very modern language. What a great, great thing to start setting into. Don't, don't be like, I'm going to read the Bible during this Lent season. Be like, I'm going to read this book in the Bible. I'll do James. I can do that. It's only a few chapters. Set some time to pray. I'm not going to put anybody up, put, pick any one particular person out that was in Bible study this week, but we were sharing about how we find silence in our lives because we believe that, that God can meet us in the silence and that the world is so noisy that it can be so deafening that we're just missing opportunities to hear God. And I shared with the group that when I try to find silence, I use a tool. I'll use a candle. Now, none of these is, is, is God, right? I mean... Is, is, these are just tools. These are just aids, correct? Okay, let's bring this all to today's scripture reading. <clears throat> so after 60 days, Jesus took him, uh, Peter, James, and John, brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transformed before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Familiar passage, people? For the most part, yeah? Yeah. Um, just then, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters or tents or tabernacles, depending on how we translate it. Um, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And then while, they were still, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now, I'm willing to bet anybody that knows this scripture, just even a little bit, or heard it preached on, is expecting the pastor to now say, Peter. Peter. He, he means well. Peter. He means well, right? But, but he, he made a mistake, didn't he? I mean, Linda, have you heard that before? About how, you know, he, he wanted to stay on that mountain. And, and all the pastors, almost all the commentary will say, Peter made a mistake here because he wants to stay on this mountain. He wants to keep them locked up on this mountaintop. Well, I was thinking about it today, and I was doing some other research throughout this week, and I was saying to myself, maybe Peter didn't make a mistake. Maybe that's the mistake we're making today. Maybe the pastor's saying, see, Peter's making a mistake. He wants to stay on that mountain, but I say, get out there, go do some mission work. We all want to stay on the mountaintop experience. We've got to get off. I've even preached that. But what if this is Peter's doing something right here where he's saying, man, we need to spend more time with God. We need to spend more time being lifted up in God, being lifted, soaking in the light of God. There's a story I'm going to share with you about a man soaking in the light of God. Now, just to finish the scripture, slide's running slow today. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. So they're afraid, right? And why not? This was quite a thing they saw, right? And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Do not tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Now, Christian church today, Jesus has been raised. Friends, I tell you today that Jesus is raised from the dead and that we can't hold on to that, to those excuses of saying that we're waiting for something else to come, for it is here, it is before us. Okay, I got to... I just want to go through the story real quick with you. Jesus becomes a glow. Amen? All right. And when they see him a glow, what are they? What are they? Afraid. They're afraid. And then Jesus says, don't be afraid. Amen? Okay. Here's a picture. What do you think? Is this a picture of Jesus on this mountaintop experience? So what's interesting is this is not a picture of that. This is an artist's rendition of a different story. A story that comes to us from Exodus 34, the radiant face of Moses. This is a biblical memory story. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I, that's not what I'm proclaiming. I'm saying, uh, when I went through the commentaries, that, they're not saying this is a poetic expression. But it would be a memory of, hey, God is doing this again. It says, when Moses came down Mount Sinai, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he spoke to the Lord. Ah, just like Jesus, right? God's doing this again. And then Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses. His face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. Sound familiar? Right? But Moses called to them. And when Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. Why wouldn't he put the veil on first? Because they were afraid, right? 
But he does it. Notice the order of operation here. He puts his veil on after. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And then when he came, he, his, uh, they saw that his face was radiant until Moses put the veil back over his face until he went to speak to the Lord. So, so I'm thinking, maybe Peter's got something here. Maybe Peter's remembering Moses. Moses putting on, getting in the light of God. See, if we're going to do mission, we need to get our God on. We've got to put ourselves in the presence of God. Here's the picture of the rendition of this story. Because we have a, now Elijah and Moses. Now, I've preached this before a few years back. Maybe some of you might remember it. But I'll share with it quick today. For 2 Corinthians in the New Testament tells us, Therefore, we have such a hope that we are very bold, and we're not like Moses who put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. You see what happened with Moses was, the reason he put a veil on, he wasn't trying to be humble. He wasn't like, hey, see, oh, look at Moses' face. What a godly man. He'd be like me wearing a collar all the time, right? Like, wow, look at me, guys. I'm a light. I'm a light. Oh, Moses is so humble that he puts a veil over. No, that's not what Moses was doing. What was happening, when Moses got away from God, he started to lose the light of God because he was no longer in the presence. He needed to be recharged. You know those solar lights? He needed to be recharged by God. And when he didn't, he would put the veil on because he was embarrassed. He was ashamed that the light of God was no longer in him. You feel the light of God is falling away from you? Spend some more time in God's presence. We can't work our way into that. Like meaning that doing, doing the mission uh, work just, just for charity's sake. This is where we come together and we spend some work in ourselves in, in taking time with God. We're focused on doing outreach, and, I, and I'm big on that. You guys all know that. But, but we can't do it unless we spend time in dedication, in devotion with our Lord, quiet time. You think maybe uh, we have all these different devotions, and it sounds like we're trying to work our way, but it's not. It's about taking the time, right? Taking the time and, and sharing a little bit difference. And, and Teresa, there's many things in her life I know she could share with me that would bring me into a closer relationship with God. And each and every single one of you has a, a, your own unique walk that would help me be closer to God. Each and every single one of you. But each and every single one of you also has an opportunity to receive a new revelation of what it's to be in fellowship with God with somebody else. And to be to receive, we're alive, we breathe, Yes? In and out. I want you, what is your heartbreak for? Do you want to be in a deeper fellowship with God? These are all ways. Why do we do Bible study? Not just to check it off. We do it because we, we work together and we try to, we try to get a deeper understanding mutual, mutually. Why do we come to church? Because we want to come and worship our Lord. Why do we take time and share these things? So we as a community of faith can get a deeper understanding and fellowship with God. So I invite you to, to discern over all this this week. I, inv- I ask you as we enter into the Lenten season, Pastor Barry's always been big into saying, don't give something up, take something on. Last year I offered you all to give something up. This year I'm going back to my old ways. Take on something. Take on a devotional practice that will bring you into a moment of serenity with your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Five minutes? Take five minutes? It's going to take work. Five minutes seems like a long time when it's new. But see if this Lenten, this 40-day journey, if we can come up with a new way of of falling into a deeper relationship with God and just to throw it out there, maybe Bible study would be a good place to start. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Next week, we're going to be looking at mercy. I'm really excited about this sermon. We're going to be looking at what does it mean to be mercy and have mercy given to us and bestow upon others. Please, friends, I'm not going to stop on this. By the time this series is over, I want everyone to share just, even if it's one word, who does my heart break for? And I, I promise, I can keep going on this series. <laughs> Amen. Can we do that? Let us, stay in, let us stay in this discernment of who our heart breaks for. And where do we begin? Always we begin and we end in prayer. So let us now lift up any joys or concerns that we may have as we approach our Lord now in prayer.